We are in Hallstatt, one of the most picturesque, famous and visited places in the entire world known for its crystal clear blue lake, the beautiful mountains surrounding the lake and the 16th century alpine houses and alleyways. In this video today we will talk about the transportation cost and how to get to Hallstatt, the things to do in Hallstatt and also what the overall cost is to spend a day in this beautiful magical place. First for introduction, my name is T, that's my husband AJ and together we have visited over 20 countries in the last 8 years. Today we are in Lake Hallstatt which is located in Austria's western shore mountainous region. It is actually closer to Salzburg, it takes about roughly 80 kilometers to get there from Salzburg but from Vienna it is quite far. It is about 288 kilometers now we were staying in vienna so we actually traveled from vienna to hallstatt As mentioned before, our journey started in Vienna. We woke up super early in the morning and got to the train station for around 4.45 in the morning. And we got the very first train uh, to Atnang Putin, which is the first stop before Hallstatt. And we used the West Bahn service compared to OBB um, for our first train journey. Reason being is because West Bahn is just extremely cheaper compared to OBB. You get some amazing discounts. So do check out their app um, and their website for great discounts, not only to Atnang Putin, but also to places like Salzburg and Innsbruck I mean sometimes train tickets are around 8 euros with West Bahn whereas they can be like 40 euros with OBB the train journey was around an hour and a half to Atnang Puchim and we only had to wait around 10 minutes at the train station before changing over to OBB service from Atnang Puchim uh, to Hallstatt so only one change as I said before and do be careful about your journey planning because sometimes you could be waiting at Atnang Puchin for a good 40-45 minutes but we were lucky that day we planned our journey well so we didn't have to wait and uh, waste a lot of time at Atnang Puchin especially since there's not really much to do there. Um, the overall train um, tickets for us, which was return tickets, um, it was around £80. Now, I do really want to emphasize the fact that we booked very last minute, as in the night before. Whereas before, I booked like a couple days before and I paid around £40 uh, return. So, if you think you want to go to Hallstatt, you know, do do plan your journey um, a couple of days before you're leaving. Um, we just didn't want to risk the weather and that's why we uh, booked our journey and and paid for the tickets the night before. Now you can see the journey from Atnang Puchim to Hallstatt was absolutely beautiful, uh, stunning views. We arrived at Hallstatt just before nine, which was perfect. There were still tourists, but not many people compared to later on in the day. Um, and here, what you do need to do is you need to get a ferry ticket. So of course you need to cross over the lake, you need to get to the other side. Um, and for that, you need a ferry. I believe the ferry price was around 15 euros return ticket. Don't quote me on that it might be 10 euros um but it was it, it wasn't it wasn't too bad and also you get to go on the ferry which is an experience itself mentioned that we were extremely lucky with the weather because just the day before it was thunder lightning um, and storms and in fact on the day we were in Hallstatt it was also due to rain and thunder in the evening and it did just as we were leaving so we were super super lucky do check out the weather when planning to go to Hallstatt Our first activity in Hallstatt after walking around for about half an hour was to actually get a boat on the lake. Now we did this the last time we were in Hallstatt and it was around 35 euros last time but this time we noticed some people had different prices so we walked around a bit. There's a few places you can get the boat from and they only accept cash so do bear that in mind. Take some euros with you but do look around and go for the best option for you I would say. Now it also depends on the size of the boat you get. The smaller boats are around 30 
20 or 35 euro for an hour and the bigger boats can be like 40 or 45 euros which is actually not bad to have the boat to yourself and you can go around uh, with no restrictions around the lake so we got the boat for two hours last time we got it for an hour uh, but we thought let's try two hours this time and see how it goes now i would say two hours was a really long time and i mean we thought it would be great it was great we had the views and you know we had a great time but two hours felt like an extremely long time and we actually made it all around the lake which is a which is a huge lake um so if you think that an hour will be too short definitely don't think that i think an hour is still great but if you want to go for two hours that's also an option An advantage of having the boat for two hours is that you can swap around with your family or friends. Now on this journey we were joined by our brother so we let him drive the boat for about an hour and a half while we put our feet up and we really just enjoyed um, the experience, the stunning views of the mountain, the lake and also just appreciating the sound of nature, the sound of water. Very very therapeutic I find it for myself when compared to the busy city noises of traffic and people. Um, another advantage of coming really early in the morning here. Um, you know it was just very very peaceful and we would definitely recommend this experience as one of the things to do in Hallstatt now you don't have to do the two hours and uh, one hour is more than enough the only thing is if you have two hours you can go really far out on the lake um, but doing one hour is just equally as beautiful and recommended now when we went far out in the lake we actually saw a snake um, and I'm absolutely terrified of snakes um, I really don't like snakes so you can imagine when I saw one right next to a boat in the lake it really really terrified me out um, and it was sort of an indication for us that we need to come back uh, we just made it back in time just around two hours on time so I guess the snake was an indication to tell us that it's time to head back um, but yes I don't know if any of you have ever seen a snake in Lake Hallstatt before we didn't see one um, on our previous uh, time in Hallstatt but if you have do let me know in the comments down below um, I really didn't appreciate that um, seeing a snake but I guess it's nature One of the next things to do in Hallstatt is to actually go to the salt mines or top of Hallstatt. Now, you can either go to the salt mine or you don't have to. You've got different ticket options, uh, but there are many ticket options like having one way for nuclear or both for nuclears uh, going up and down or for nuclear return ticket and salt mine. Now, we got the combined ticket, which was a salt mine plus for nuclear return. Um, and we actually uh, got this ticket for around 36 euros, but you can can get a cheaper ticket for example if you don't want to go to the salt mine is 20 euros uh, per adult just for a round trip um, of the Finucle. now there are many many things to do um, at the top of Hallstatt there are so many walks there are waterfalls uh, walks that lead you to waterfalls and um, many trails um, you can really spend I guess an entire day at the top of Hallstatt if you really wanted to um, and go on different types of walks you've also got the sky walk which we will have a look at later on uh, but I our very first stop uh, this time round it was actually the salt mines now last time we ran out of time um, and we weren't able to go to the salt mines so this time we made sure to check out the salt mines first uh, because uh, the tour actually lasts around two hours for the salt mine so this is just showing our walk to the salt mines
after a good 10 minute walk we finally made it to the world's oldest salt mine yes you heard it right Hallstatt has one of the world's oldest salt mine which is nearly 7,000 years old and that is why it is definitely one of the things that you would want to do in Hallstatt it was definitely something we wanted to do we normally don't go to mines but with it being the world's oldest we just had to check it out the first thing you do when you arrive at the salt mine is you get changed yes so everyone gets changed and puts on uh, some white trousers and a jacket um, everyone has to do that uh, it's something that's compulsory and after you get changed you actually walk through a hallway uh, where there is lots of um, history and um, historic points about the people that worked in the mines um, you know all the information to do with the salt mines itself so plenty for you to to read uh, before you make your way to the second room where introductions are given um, and also shoelaces are checked because we don't want to see any trips or falls so they definitely make sure safety is a priority before you head into the salt mines they definitely take care of the safety and we really appreciated this as well I sat in German and then I explained it in English. Is that okay for you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let me welcome you with our traditional minor salute, Glück auf. We are here in the oldest active salt mine in the world. My name is Christiana. I'm your guide for this tour. When you got any problems or you have a question, please come to me and don't leave the group by yourself with more than 30 kilometers calories inside. You get lost in easy way. We are going now through this door, there's a cross, you don't need a ticket, it's only for counting that I know how much people are here. Then we're going upstairs to Marco Christina. This was built in 1719 and it was named by the mother of Empress Maria Theresia. We walk inside for 350 meters and in about 200 meters we cross the salt border. We only walk inside the rails one by one and we don't touch the cables inside because we're an active mine and it could be a little bit dangerous. Then we can start. After going through some safety procedures and introductions, we scan the ticket to finally make our way to the world's oldest salt mine. Yes, I will never get tired of saying that. Um, again, stunning views before you go to the salt mine. Um, this is actually um, where we headed back last time we were here because we realized we won't make it in time for the last ferry to take us back to the train station. But we finally made it this time and we're finally going to um, go through and check out the world's oldest salt mine.
this is how we ended our salt mine tour. The two hour guided tour was absolutely amazing. We gathered so much information um, about the salt mine um, and we learned a lot of history. Um, and this is how you actually end the tour, which is a great way of ending the tour as you can also get the view of outside. Um, you end it uh, by coming out on a train. <laughs> a really great innovative way to end a great tour. After this, we walked back down. A great opportunity for us to get our drone out and get some stunning shots and make our way to the skywalk. As you can see, Skywalk is a place where you get 360 views of Lake Hallstatt, the mountains and the lake. Um, and you can actually walk right to the end where it feels like you're on top of the lake, also a bit scary. Um, but this, this place is right next to the funicular ride which takes you back down. And there's also some toilets and a restaurant here um, alongside the beautiful views. So you've got some facilities um, if you're hungry or if you need to use the bathroom. After checking out Skywalk, we finally made our way down and ditched the funicular and walked down. And don't have many videos of us walking down as my story space ran out. Perfect timing. But anyhow, um, it was a great experience and we would recommend it. But now I'm going to talk about some things I haven't already covered. And number one is food. We eat halal food. So to be safe, uh, we took some snacks and food with us. But there are many restaurants in Hallstatt. They are very expensive. Um, so do bear that in mind. But there are restaurants in Hallstatt. Number two is the weather. As many mentioned before weather can change day by day or even hour by hour it rained for an entire week before we went and it actually rained when we were leaving and this is how it looked and you don't want it to rain when you're there and the next one is drones you are allowed to use drones in Hallstatt but the people living there don't like them and you might get told off like us if you use them next to the house so do make sure you use it in isolated places like this the big question is Hallstatt worth it an absolute yes it is definitely recommended we love going to Hallstatt we've been there twice in less than a year it's a beautiful stunning place so peaceful and um, one of the best lakes we've seen so far i know there's much more to explore but we really enjoyed our time in hallstatt and would recommend it to anyone now i hope you've enjoyed watching this video do remember to like and subscribe to our channel thank you for coming along our adventure and join us on instagram for more